Good morning again, everyone. Great worship this morning, guys. Thank you so much for that. Um, so I mentioned at the start of the service that I don't know where we're going this morning. I still don't know where we're going this morning. We're just going to see what God wants to do. But I just want to share. <laughs> I want to I want to try and be a bit vulnerable with you. Kind of inspired a bit by Jen last week. Um, if you were here last week, uh, Jen shared a very honest and real message with us. Um, a lot involving her own hurts and pains and difficulties and struggles and wrestling and what does that look like and how do we trust in God uh, for the future and I kind of want to continue the theme a little this morning. Um, Now I don't know whether I'm just getting old but this week I've just felt really grumpy. Does anyone else feel grumpy? Not, not, Not necessarily this morning, like you know just generally grumpy. Does anyone here consider... Put your hand up, H, your wife pointing at you. Go, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> is anyone else in here uh, feeling the same thing? They feel a bit grumpy, just like generally grumpy. All together, on the count of three, we're going to do it together. Like, if, you, if you're not grumpy, well, fine, whatever, don't care, all right? But the rest of us who are being honest, just put your hand up on the count of three. One, two, three, put your hand up. Right, quite a few of us, fantastic. That's what I want to see. Because now I know I'm not alone. And that gives me pure permission to talk about what I want to talk about uh, this morning. Now, before we go on further, I want to tell you one of the reasons why I've been grumpy this week. Um, oh, this hurts to talk about this, by the way. Um, so, uh, for the last year, I've been in a fantasy football league, okay? Uh, this is serious stuff, guys, okay? Um, a year I was in this stupid league, um, and it's a church league, uh, Pete set it up, and it's been going for a few years now, now, just so you know, for the last three years, I've won, <laughs> just want to throw that out there, and um, this year, it came down to the last game of the season, I've got to say, since Christmas time, I've basically been at the front, leading the pack, just doing what I do, just winning, you know, and uh, uh, it's been lovely. And if those that don't know and you're not interested in football, I, I don't care right now. I'm going to share this pain with you anyway. Uh, last week, last Saturday, was the last day of the uh, domestic season when the league finishes. And um, there I was in first place on their last day. And annoyingly, um, there's this other guy, John Stupid Hughes. Is he here today? Oh, there he is, John. Hello, John. Uh, sorry, I, I know your name's not really stupid. <laughs> uh, um, and on the last day of the season, I kind of, the day before, by the way, just want to throw this out there, um, I gave John some advice. kind of said, John, I think you should captain Kane on the last day of the season. I think John will admit that. Of course, when it came to uh, the last day of the season, I thought, well, I know John's captaining Kane. I can't do the same thing, and because uh, that would just seem dirty if I did that. So I didn't. And... Uh, John beat me by nine points, which, don't clap him. It was a humbling and hard, hard day. And I went up to my room that evening, Ali will tell you, this is true. And I just, I just sat in bed with my laptop. I was in a grump, a proper grump. And, uh, but normally, this is the first year where we've decided to give a trophy to the winner, <laughs> which has irritated me a bit more. So Mr. Hughes, you want to come up here and receive your trophy. And Pete's going to get a picture because this is going to go on a... Don't clap. He doesn't need to clap. He's getting a trophy. And I'm, we're going to get a picture now. I'm going to give this to you with a happy heart. And you're going to receive it with a humble heart, yeah? Okay. Well... There's always next year. Well done, John. If you want to join the Fancy League from, from September, you, you are more than welcome. And we're going to go again. And the winner every year will get this trophy. Uh, obviously, I will win it back, my friend. Yeah, so thank you. So well done, John. Um, but that, that did make me grumpy. And it's, in, it's interesting, isn't it, how, how small things or reasonably small things can get us in a like frustrated or grumpy uh, place. So this morning, I thought you could share in my frustrations by, we got right here a stool. Now, this is the stool of complaining. And what I want you to do, uh, if you're brave enough, I want you to come and sit on the stool and share 
something that you want to complain about. Now, I can give you an example for that, like, you know, and some they can be little things, they can be big things, but it, here's a, a you know a couple. So one might be losing on the last day of the season to John. That's something to complain about. It's annoying. Um, another thing might be how Coca-Cola and all of those bottle companies now think I'm such a child that they super glue the lid to the bottle. Has anyone seen this? It is so annoying. I am not a child. I get why they're doing it. The idea is that when the lid is attached, it's classified as recycling, etc. But I feel like they're treating me like a... I know how to put a lid back on a bottle. You don't have to super glue it to the top. And that might be a complaint. Now, has anyone got a complaint they'd like to share this morning? I'll give you another complaint. I, I, that, wait, I'm going to complain some more. What? Oh, yeah, sorry. I'll give you another complaint. Okay. Um, for all you Star Wars, this is the kind of thing that upsets me. Uh, Star Wars fans, have we got any in the house? I know we've got at least one. Right. Kev, I know you'll feel my pain on this. Right. So, for years and years and years, Star Wars was like one of the best things in the world. Right. And then they. They get your hopes up with a film like The Force Awakens after you've been waiting for like 40 years or something stupid. And then they bring out a film called The Last Stupid Jedi and it ruins everything. That's a complaint. Um, anyone share that, that pain with me? Does anyone even know what I'm talking Yes, worst film in the history of the world. Agreed? Agreed? Ruined everything? I am not joking. I came out of the cinema. Kev will tell you the truth. I had all this Star Wars stuff. I had posters. I had little figures and stuff. I literally said to Kev, have it all. Just take it. And he, took, he, went, he left my house with like massive posters and all sorts. It really hurt me. Anyone? Anyway, anyone else got a complaint? Have you got a complaint, Jen? Oh. Oh, Jar Jar Binks. Oh, okay. Bev, have you got a complaint? Yeah, come sit on the stool of complaining. I know it might sound petty, but I like coffee, and I like it how I like it. So I like it at a Contado small glass um, with uh, oat milk. And uh, I've been getting that for like oh, a few years now. But when I go into Costa and I ask for the drink I've asked for, they don't give me what I'm looking for. They give me for a big drink, and I don't like a big drink. I like a small drink. Right, I'm going to stop you right there, right? Are you complaining that you get more coffee than you're meant to? Right. If, if anyone else shares this complaint, I'll give you a point. But if no one shares it, I, that doesn't count. Does anyone share this complaint? Oh, trust it to be Bill Martin. Well done, Bill. All right, fine, you can have a point. Well done. Anyone else want to share um, um, a complaint? Please feel free. Oh, Joy's on the way. Come on, Joy. Come and share a complaint. We're going to feel good after this, by the way, this morning. We're going to get this out of our system. All of these little things that just drive us up the wrong way. You want to sit on the stool of complaints? Um, it's a complaint for how I can stop myself worried about my anxiety and coping, coping with it. Because I, I just pin in pieces. I can't cope with this. I love that. And this is what I'm talking about. This is kind of where I want to get to this morning. Thank you for sharing that. Um, like, there are, we have the, I guess the surface complaints that don't really matter, let's be honest. So like, Star Wars, in reality, unless you're like an absolute fan like Kev, doesn't really matter. I suppose a bottle lid doesn't really matter. But there are also complaints that we have, just like some of the stuff that, that Jen shared last week which uh, are deep, and they're rooted, and they're painful, they're hard, and they're justified. They're justified complaints. Any more complaints that we wanted to share this morning? Anything that, that just frustrates you, just get annoyed? It doesn't matter if it's surface level. It doesn't matter if it seems unimportant. What are the things that just, you know, so for example, when, when you let someone out in traffic, and they don't wave at you and say thank you, that honestly, it can give you a bad day, that. Like, like, if they don't wave at you, and you literally you can spend the next hour thinking, what kind of world am I living in? You, you know, it's just, well, I, well, I know you must have some complaints, sir. Not just that you lost your hair. Huh? <laughs> Where to start, did you say? Where to start? Have you got any complaints that you, yeah? No one in my house. 
knows where the washing basket is or they put it next to the washing basket or on top like on the top of the lid not actually in the washing basket apparently no one in elaine's house knows where the washing basket is uh, <laughs> and uh it's weird because our house doesn't even have a washing basket but how weird is that um so yeah it's it, Yeah, I, obviously I was joking, and uh, yeah. Um, I just find like, if you just put it on piles on the floor, it tidies itself up, it's amazing. Yeah, they're amazing. Um, any, any more complaints that they, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, that went out way too hard there, way, way too fast. Um, yeah, any, any more, we're gonna, it's getting personal. Do you wanna come down, Jan? Uh, do you, I'm aware we've got American guests today, so I'm going to be sensitive. I love America. Yeah. I love American people. I've been there many times. But we're British, right? And all the communication, especially the young kids today, they're mixing American English with British English. And... Can I hear an amen in the room? Yeah. <laughs> an amen, yeah. <laughs> so, amen, amen. Amen. And uh, I keep having to say, you know, schedule, not schedule, yeah. you know, and stuff like that, and it drives me nuts. Yeah. Um, that, that's really heartfelt complaint there. Yeah. It's yeah, world changing. Uh, while, we're, while we're complaining about America, I've got a few. Um, uh, welcome to England, by the way. Um, when they write their dates, they put the month and then the day and then the year. Like, what, what were you thinking? Like, what, what, what's going on there? Anyway, yeah, uh, we won't bully them too much because they... Oh, c come on down. Come on down. Would you like to come and sit on the, the, the stool of complaint? It's, it's, it's a valid point. So American calendars start on a Sunday. Uh, British calendars start on a Monday. What is, where, where does the, the week start? Mon, mon, yeah, we all agree it's Monday. So once... <laughs> Once again, you're wrong. Um, uh, 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 shut up, Mike. Um, yeah, Jen, you got, you got one to share? Oh, here she comes. Oh, God, Peter, Peter. This is going to be good. Take a seat. This does not have to do with my husband. Oh. So, continuing on with this American-British oh, thing. Thank you. Since moving here, I have, been found, I have found myself in so many debates where people want to know my opinion on scones if you put the clotted cream or the jam first. I do not care. It does not matter. Stop bringing me into your petty arguments about scones or scones. Thank you, Jen. Well, well amen that. Have we got any more of this? Come on. Keep it coming. Oh, have you, yeah, come on, Michael. Do you, You've got to come to the seat of complaint, unless you're Elaine, who gets special treatment. Although she did, you did sit on the front row. I'll give you points for that. Nothing much to say, but this is quite small. It's just a bit annoying. So I'm going to complain about it. Go for it. It's really hard to wait. Really hard to wait. Even though you know God's got everything. For anyone to be healed, for anyone that's waiting for some good thing to happen, some bad thing to stop happening, it's really hard to wait. And my complaint is that I can't do it very well, and I need help. Amen on that. Let me tell you, mate, you are not alone in that. I think most of us, if we put our hand up, the waiting game for God is hard. It's difficult. Maybe that's one of the things that we'll, we'll talk about in a moment. Um, Any more? I don't, I don't want to, I feel like we want to roll. I don't want to, oh, here he comes. Uh-oh. Um, uh, you... you it, uh, <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> I've got to be good, apparently. Yeah, definitely. So, modern cars. Oh, mechanic. Yeah. Apart from they're all rubbish. Mechanic. Jaguar Land Rover. Terrible. Worst ever now. Terrible. Um, everything's made of plastic, which is made of oil. Everything's got more screens. 
which is all precious metals. Everything's made out of Chineseium, which is... <laughs> it's terrible. I'm not sure that's actually a word, by the way. We'll, we'll, we'll Google that later. I is think it? it is. Is it a word? It's I'm the learning. worst metals you can get. Right. They don't last, and they're supposed to be eco-friendly. So you're, you're, you're feeling... I can see the anger boiling up Ooh. in your eyes. And they don't use proper bolt sizes anymore, either. I, I hear you. I, 18 mil. Who uses an 18 mil? I, I, I literally don't. <laughs> and the Japanese, they won't use a 13 mil because it's unlucky. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so they use 14 uh, wow, and that's, 12s. That's, that's, that's cool. Shall I get comfortable? No, no. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> I knew exactly what he was talking about when he was talking about 18 mil. I actually don't have a clue what he's talking about. Um, yeah, I, 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 I do feel your pain, though. And just, I, I, if we're complaining, though, Kev, I'll sit down for this one. I once got a speeding ticket. <laughs> I once got a speeding ticket because Kev fixed my car and um, didn't fix my speedometer. So I was driving at 10 miles per hour over the speed limit uh, for about two weeks. And, uh, yeah, I got a speeding ticket. But luckily, to be fair to you, you wrote them a letter and you said, this is my fault, took responsibility, and, uh, and he put it right. So what a good boy. Um, so that's my attack on you, Eva. Uh, anyone else? Oh, Ke oh Kate. Ah, oh. is this going to be about Kev as well? Oh. Uh, my complaint is that Kev just got acknowledgement for writing the letter, and I actually wrote it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I love it. This is actually a beautiful morning, right? I'm loving this. Um, any other complaints that we have in how? Come on, Richard. I've been waiting for you, mate. Uh, if you, Rich has actually preached here before. I love this guy. Um, I'll complain about that in a minute. I've got the microphone. No. <laughs> My petty hate. I hate political correctness with every fibre of my being because it's like just living like a Pharisee. You're just living by the rules and it doesn't change anything. You know, what needs to change is someone's heart. Yes, mate. Amen. I'm going to leave this open for one more. If anyone's got one final complaint they want to share, uh, now's your time. Come on up, my friend. This is what I want to see. This is going to come from a quite deep place in my heart. So I work in a pub. Um, I work down a croft farm. And we serve Guinness. And I really, really wish we didn't. Um, the amount of times people will come up to me and I'll, I'll pour it in. It'll be the best pour I've done in my life. And they will take a sip of it, make a face at me, and tell me it tastes better in Ireland. And to be fair, it probably does. But they'll, they'll stare daggers. They'll expect me to do something. As I can't do anything about that. <laughs> and like, They'll, they'll, and then they'll do an order, 30 pound round, that's fine. They'll chuck a Guinness on the end, and I will be shaking my fist at them around the back of the bar. Does my oh. nothing, absolutely. I love that, yes, mate, yes. It's, it's funny, isn't it, how these like, little things, where we might see them as little things, have such like, an impact on our mood, on how we feel about it. And I, I was talking to someone before the service about, like, where does it come from? Like, where does all this frustration come from? Like, something happens, and you know, someone doesn't uh, let you in when you when you sorry, someone doesn't wave a thank you when you let them in traffic, which is like I said, that I, honestly, that thing just grinds me, and it's enough to ruin your day. Like, it's silly, it's stupid, it makes no sense, but it's enough to ruin your day, to rob you of any joy that, that you could have had because of something really uh, silly and and stupid and to be honest it happens to me uh at the moment i think in the last year or so i've just found myself becoming I, like i said i don't know whether i'm just getting older and like i said a couple of weeks ago i'm getting achier and sore and all that kind of stuff and i just generally feel more grumpy or whether there's something a bit more deep rooted with what's going on in the world around us like are these expressions of frustration these things that bug us the things that wind us up it's all quite surface level, but is it because deeper down, there's frustration, like real deep 
anger, real deep frustration, real deep complaints. And I've just found myself just in a place, and I'm just being honest with you guys this morning, just in a place of just feeling frustrated all the time. I'm frustrated with, by the way, I'm not frustrated with anyone in particular or anything like that, but I, just generally I just feel on edge all the time. Now it might be, and you can draw your own conclusion, I'm just having a mental breakdown. <laughs> we'll, deal, we'll deal with that if that's the case. Or it might be that because spiritually something is going on and something is robbing me of the joy that I can have in the Lord. And um, I've done lots of complaints over the last couple of uh, months, really, about the world that we live in. And I don't believe that those complaints are unjustified. Does anyone else feel like society at the moment just feels like it's going down the drain? Like, what is going on? I don't understand it. I just don't understand. I think partly, I think I can relate it from a Christian perspective. I think partly it's because... Um, we're becoming more secular as a society. We're abandoning God, uh, the belief in God. We're abandoning uh, the structures on which our society is built, which included God and uh, moral standings, all, all, all of these things and standards. And we're watching them bit by bit. And, and I say bit by bit, but it seems to be happening more and more rapidly. I, I'm seeing everything getting really muddy. And everything's falling apart. And it leaves me with a great, uh, like, uh, and, and I, I, I can't really describe it in another word than it just leaves me with a sense of grief. Like, it's all falling down and there's nothing I can do to stop it. And like, I, I, I tried to explain to Ali this morning, I, I, I feel like I'm, do you know, like, if you've, if you, have you ever been sledding? Or been on a roller coaster, maybe when you were younger, you jump on a sled and you're going downhill and you realize that you are stuck on that journey now. Like you're stuck, like you are getting to the bottom. You're either gonna be either gonna be on the sled or it's gonna be on your face, but you're gonna get down there somehow. That you can't get off this crazy journey. You know? Or have you ever been on a roller coaster and instantly regretted that decision? Like, what am I doing? Um, I've had some. Uh, pretty horrendous experiences on roller coasters. Um, they've left me with a sense of anxiety and dread. And often it's because I've got myself stuck in a situation that I can't get out. You can't just say, roller coaster, please stop. And, you know, slowly go back to the beginning and let me off. You just say, and I kind of feel like, this is just me being honest, I kind of feel like I'm in, in a moment where everything's falling apart, where I can see it happening. Certainly I can look at it and go, what is going on with, uh, with the poverty? What is going on with the way we're treating um, refugees? What is going on with the fact that we have middle class income families using food banks? What is going on when uh, schools just seem to be just so heavily burdened with, with things? I look at our poor teachers. I just feel nothing but sadness uh, for them um, and how it all just seems to be uh, falling apart. What is going on? You flick on, you, maybe uh, if you're like me and you like a bit of downtime, you might watch your Netflix or your Disney Plus or whatever. Um, and you go on now, and, it's, and I, I, it just, it's just filth. It's just filth. And I don't mean that in a religious point of view, from a religious perspective. I don't mean like, you know, I've always felt my, you know, I, I've been like one of the guys. Like, I'm, I'm naturally an evangelist. I want to be, be like other people so that I can show them uh, my faith and show them that I'm not a weirdo and I'm just a normal person that has a faith. Uh, so, I, I, you know, and, and I've, in the past, I've just watched whatever I wanted and, you know, anything that just kind of goes too far, I just, you know, don't watch it or I skip over that part or whatever. But more and more, it's like just absolute filth. Um, I was saying to Pete last, like, have, does anyone remember back in the 90s, Perry Mason? Right, brilliant program, right? Um, and uh, it was like daytime TV. And he's like, it's almost like uh, he's like a lawyer guy, isn't he? And he's, you know, solving crimes and all this kind of stuff. Very cool. In a wheelchair, isn't he? Is he in a wheelchair? Yeah. Very awesome. Huh? Oh, I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, I remember Perry Mason. He had the beard, right? The grey beard. I remember him. Um, yeah. Anyway, so um, I remember watching these programs when I was younger and enjoying them, et cetera. And they've just brought out a new Perry Mason series. I was really excited. And I watched it last, the first episode last night. 
And like what I saw was just so dark. They showed like, um, and, and this isn't me being religious or over the top spiritual. I'm just, it was like effectively almost like a porn scene at the start of the, the thing. Um, then later on they show a dead child. Um, and uh, this dead child has it's like a one-year-old. He's got its, um, uh, its eyes sewn together and it actually shows you snipping. I'm like, whoa. What's going on? And again, just even just watching that little that, that little you know TV series, my spirit just feels like whoa. I've never felt more like an alien as a Christian here at the moment in society as I do today. I, I feel like I'm an alien living on an alien world. And I don't think it's because I've changed lots. Maybe I'm changing a little. Maybe as I'm going towards God, maybe that's... But I just see a, a world, the world that I live in, which is going totally in a direction that I just don't want to be part of. And I feel like an, an absolute alien. Am I alone in this? Or do, do people relate? Okay. So my question is this. What do we do about that? Because the reality is, uh, it's having an impact on the church as well. One of the things that grieves me is when I look at the church, and I'm, you know, I'm being very general here, and I'm not saying that, um, I, I, it's not for me to judge where other people's faith is at, and, but I look at the church, and I see a church in trouble. Because I see a church that is, tr- that, do you, know, do you know that famous saying? If it walks like a duck, and it, t- t- you know, um, was it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, then it's a duck, right? And I look at the wider church, and it looks like the world. It acts like the world. It talks like the world. What is it? And it scares me. Yeah, it scares me a little bit. I, th- I feel like, and I'm left. These are just my own personal struggles. And I know not everyone will feel the same. But I'm left in this place where, it, I, honestly, I feel like I'm grieving. I'm left in a place of heaviness, and I'm left in a place of complaining, complaining to God. And many, of my, I think more in the last year than ever before, my prayers to God have been, why, Lord? What's, what's going on here, Lord? I don't, I don't get this. I need your help, Lord. Help me, strength. Give me something. Just, just this heaviness. So hopefully, I'm, not, I'm glad that people agree with me. I'm not having a breakdown. But it does, it does, I, you know, and I, I think Pete, Pete was saying the same thing. Sometimes I think the easiest thing to do right now with the world the way it's going would be for me to go live in my own little community with the church, you know. So we all move. Okay? We, go, we go and buy all the houses in a little village. We have this bit of land and we just, we just live. We live off the land. We do old school, yeah. We get rid of the internet. We don't need that anymore, you know. Um, and, and we just live in this little community and we just, you know, it's going to be happy and we're going to love each other. But that's not our calling. And, I, and this is what I want to challenge us with today. And uh, I, I know we haven't got long left, so I'm going to whiz through this. That's not our calling. Because we, you know, there's, there's, we, we know that we're supposed to love the people in the world. Actually, the Bible, you'll find scriptures all over the place. If you look at James, if you look at Jude, where we're supposed to hate the world. And by the way, it's not talking about the people in the world, but it's talking about the world's way. We've got to love the people, love them enough to want to help them out of the mire and the clay and the dirt and the rubbish. Love them enough, but hate the way of the world. I need to look at my Netflix and go, I hate that. I hate what that is. I hate what it represents. I, I want to look at maybe some of those society structures we just mentioned and I need, to, I need to hate it, hate the way that is, hate the disparity between the rich and the poor, for example. Hate the fact that refugees are literally drowning off the coast of our country. And I'm not going to go into the whole political thing. I'm not going to go down that, that route. But I need to hate that. I need to hate that that is a thing. You know, I need to hate the fact that people need feeding in our community because they can't afford food at the end of the month, even though they're in a pretty decent job. 
I need to hate that. But I also, I can't just run away from it. We, as the church, can't just run away from it and hide away. We've got to be, we've got to be uh, willing to love our community, love our neighbor, love these folk out there so much that we're willing to get dirty. And uh, the picture that I kind of shared with Ali was this. Like, my life, I came from the miry clay. If you're going to read the Psalms and you see this beautiful picture of God reaching in and pulling us out of miry clay. And the kind of picture in my head is you can't drag someone out of the clay without getting some mud on you. And I would encourage you, my heart for us as a church, is to complain and be frustrated and be sad and be heavy-hearted, um, and, but not run away from it. But go, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to help? But how do I protect myself? Because I might get mud on me, but I need to go and wash my hands. You know, I'm in the world. I'm going to get some of it on me. I don't want to hide away from it and create my own new little world. I'm going to get some of it on me, but I need to be able to go to God and get clean again. And then go again with the rescuers. And I just want to just share this Bible verse with you. And uh, because complaining to God is not wrong, there's actually a whole book called Lamentations, uh, which literally lamenting. It's a whole book about lamenting and coming to God going, this is horrible. Why has this happened? I don't get it. Just complaining. It's okay to complain to God. We've got to be careful with how we complain to each other. because We can drag each other down. But we can go to God whenever we want, and we can lay our complaints at his, at his feet. And I love these few verses in Psalm 142, Psalm of David. And it says this, I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out before him my complaint. Before him, I tell my trouble. When my spirit grows faint within me and I've been in that place, I just feel exhausted with the way things are around me. When my spirit feels faint <clears throat> within me, it is you who watch over my way. In the path, path where I walk, people have hidden a snare for me. Look and see. There is no one at my right hand. This idea of I'm alone, Lord all this trouble come my way people are turning against me and I've got no one at my right hand I'm, I'm on my own in this but I can go to the Lord I cry to you Lord I say you are my refuge my portion in the land of the living listen to my cry for I am in desperate need rescue me from those who pursue me for they are too strong for me set me free from my prison, that I may praise your name. I love that. Set me free from my prison, that I may, may praise your, life, your name. Then the righteous will gather about me because of the goodness, because of your goodness to me. And what we see here is a classic kind of David lamenting, like turning to God, saying, I'm complaining because this isn't right, it's not fair. And then ask him for help. I need your help, Lord. And then the way he leaves it, and I'm going to trust that you're going to come through for me. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. My encouragement for all of you this morning is lay your complaints, the little things, the funny things, the silly things, but also those deep concerns. Lay them at the foot of the cross with the Lord and ask for his guidance and his help, and his understanding, and his strength to just keep on going. We've got a job to do. We've got a job to do. And it's going to be heavy. It's going to be hard at times. And sometimes church is going to feel like this, a little bit heavy, a little bit hard. You know, that's that's life. That's good. We can be honest with each other. We can help each other. We don't have to paint a picture that it is, you know, woohoo, we're church on Sunday, yay. Because we don't always feel like that. As Jen pointed out last week, it can can feel um, uh, really... uh, far more difficult than that. But just remember, God is faithful. God is good. 
We have each other. This is why God tells us to love each other so much. We have each other and we can lean on him. And we have the Holy Spirit. Whenever I, whenever I kind of finish a message like this, I feel like the Holy Spirit is a little add-on. What a beautiful gift. It is like, oh, and we have the Holy Spirit. Wow, what a gift. When we're struggling with this stuff, that we actually have the God within us, the Spirit that can help guide us and help us and speak to us in this time. I always, I always say this at the end because I would make eye contact with Mike Waldron over there. Because every time I don't mention the Holy Spirit after a message like this, he just comes up to me and goes, you forgot the Holy Spirit this morning. Okay, all right, Mike. All right, we won't do that again. Um, let's, let's just pray. And please, if, if this stuff, um, I, I don't want to be alone in this. Uh, I, and, and I'm wrestling, this is something I'm continually wrestling with. And I don't think, when I look towards the future, I don't see it getting easier soon. I believe that God is going to continue to do amazing things. He's going to reach people. He's going to do incredible things, as he is right now. But it's not, I don't see in the, the immediate future things suddenly getting much better. Because at the moment we have a world that is rejecting, rejecting the Lord, rejecting God and his ways. And uh, there's a consequence to that. Let's just pray. Oh, Lord, we just thank you that you are faithful. Uh, Lord, that we can trust in you with our burdens, Lord, with our complaints, the things that uh, roll us the, the wrong way, Lord. And Lord, genuinely, we're heartbroken with what's going on in the world right now, with the injustice, with the deep pain, with uh, disparities, Lord. With just The world just isn't the way it's supposed to be, and we, we recognize it. And, um, Lord, we see a, a world without you which is so muddy and mucky. But, Lord, I just thank you so much that you still love every person within it. Lord, you love your church. Will you enable and help us to reach into the mud and pull some of these folk out, Lord? Lord, thank you. We can bring our complaints to you. Nothing is too small. Nothing is too big. Nothing is too heavy. Pray that you'll be with us, that you help us. Amen.